So this is a really interesting question about um, executing programs on Linux specifically. This commenter says, but why does Linux treat binaries and scripts the same way? Why isn't the only way to run scripts using, in this example, bash script name.sh and have the dot slash program name syntax be for binaries only? Now, this is very interesting because in their example, they're talking about like running bash. So example, the bash command would be the binary and script name.sh would just be an argument to it. It would just be like a random file that has uh, bash script contents in it. So in their example, bash is a binary, program name is a binary. So basically saying we can only execute binaries that way, not scripts that way. I can't tell you why it was written that way, you know, decades ago like I don't know what the actual thought process was there but I can tell you how I think about it and what I assume is the thought process the idea and one of the most powerful things about like Linux and just like Unix in general is that I can execute anything regardless of what's inside the file because whether or not I can execute a file depends on its metadata not the contents of the file so when you're saying this example like why can't we just save this syntax specifically for binaries how do we know it's a binary? Do we have to look at the contents of the file? How can we determine if it's a binary? It's it's actually kind of a complex answer. If you go look into something like the file command or strings that command, um, or even some modern programs like bat, the Rust rewrite of cat, you can see that it has logic to determine like, hey, this file is probably a binary file. Notice that I say binary, or probably, because there are some files that are binary, but they have plain text in them. Or there'll be other files that are plain text at the beginning and then binary data at the bottom. So when does a file become binary? Um, I'm not trying to be pedantic here. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to show how confusing this topic can actually get. So when we get back to your question of like, why is this syntax only for binaries? Because how do we determine if a program is a binary? We have to start looking in the contents of the program. If we back up, it might be easier to say, hey, instead of looking at the contents of this file, let's look at the metadata, the inode, the permissions of the file and just check, is it executable or not? If it is, let's execute it. If not, we get uh, uh, some error saying we can't access or we can't execute it. So basically the power here is that we don't need to look inside the file. We don't need to look at the contents. We can just look at the metadata, the inode information, and we can see if it's executable or not. And then we can try and execute it. So instead of having to look and say like, oh, is this a binary file? No, we just execute it. Um, I think that's incredibly powerful. I think that's awesome. I think it's great that I can have a program named LS. And when I run it, it lists the directory information. I get to see all the files inside a directory. I don't need to know if that was a binary file, if that was a Perl script, if that was a bash script that ran. No, I can just drop in my own replacement LS if I wanted to. I don't care what it is. I don't care how it ran. I just know that it did run when I tried to execute it. That's incredibly powerful.